Land Boy Sculpture Series evokes ocean and river boys, which are sentinels that have warned mankind of, of impending danger for uh, centuries. I see them as a, as a metaphor for the, the age in which we live, where we have changing environment, changing climate, diminishing water resources, and, and the challenges to, to deal with all that. I like to imagine them as being stranded or deposited in, in incongruous places. They're like glacial erratics, which are these huge boulders that are carried on the backs of glaciers far from their source in the, in the mountains. While the land boys are, are sculptures, not musical instruments, I was aware of their resonant properties right from the very beginning. I knew these beautiful beasts would have wonderful acoustic properties as long as I followed certain rules as I'm building them. And the rules would be things like, which material do I use? Aluminum sounds different than steel, it sounds different than bronze. What um, thickness, what, uh, uh, where the welds are, what kind of welds, how thick they are, uh, the shape of the, uh, uh, of the pieces, the unsupported uh, parts, where I leave, where I would put an extra uh, strut in just to uh, make kind of to deaden the overtones or even leave welds out which is what we did up here so it has a real snap to it the rounded surface will have a completely different quality of, uh, than of sound than the uh, flat surface And all this derives from uh, my studio practices for decades in which I've been involved with musical instrumentation or, or even the sounds that come from uh, the pieces that are made, whether it's a mug or a uh, that you ping when you pull it out of a kiln to uh, musical instruments to sculptures that have these acoustic properties. The fact that they're round bottom also draws from the early or continuous uh, part of my studio practice in which uh, in the early days they would have been pinch pots out of clay or bronze and and they would have been vessels and now it's more like they're vessels for sound. A second audible component of the exhibition was developed by Rob Bertola sound designer from Toronto that worked with me on this project. It was great to have him involved. He created a, a continuous loop that played for the duration of the exhibition that evokes the desolate landscapes and settings in which I imagined the land boys would be found after being left behind by glaciers and waters and so on. It creates a, an acoustic environment that, that expands the reach of these material-based kinetic sculptures. All this is in support of the song of the sculpture, the idea that the sounds that are created by the tools in the forming of the pieces are somehow embedded in the surface of the sculpture. And this is, these would be the tools like the grinders and the hammers and the inscribers and the shears and so on. How you access that, I guess imagination is the only way to, to tap into that. For the opening of the Lamb Boys exhibition, Steve Bloom and I perform The Song of the Sculpture, a performance piece in which we use our hands and mallets to play the surfaces of the moving sculptures. It's, uh, there's a dynamic range that happens when this, when this occurs, and we're, we play on that, we build on that, and turn it into a, uh, an improvised but structured composition that advances and recedes and clashes and hopefully eventually 
finds resolution after that, after 12 minutes or so.